And I wouldn't be exaggerating if I said that if you really want to, you can pretty much do your entire mix using the channel strip without any plugins. Hello everyone and welcome back, Dom here and in this video we're going to talk about one of the most powerful mixing tools in Cubase. In this video I'm going to show you how to master the mighty channel strip right after this. Like I've said on previous videos, like the 20 reasons why the Cubase Mix Console is the best mixing platform on any DAW in my opinion, Cubase is a super powerful DAW when it comes to mixing. It has so many facilities, so many different options, so many shortcuts to do things that would otherwise take ages. One of the things that's built into the Cubase Mix console that's really mind-blowing and really, really sounds amazing and it really can help you get your mix to a point when it already sounds great without even adding any plugins. This is the channel strip and that's what we're gonna talk about today. But before we get started, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe, I would really appreciate it, I would love to see you back, and if you enjoy these kind of videos, please hit the like button, it really, 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 really helps. I have this track here that I've prepared, I have uh, some uh, really cool sounds on this track, by the way, I'm using the modern 80s drum kit for my drums, if you haven't got this yet, please pick it up, it's my own signature, 80s drum kit. It's free. I hope that it's still free by the time you see this. But yes, I have this and I also have quite a few sounds from Apollo, my new patch up library that was released recently. Again, if you haven't checked it out, I'm going to leave a link right here. This is a library that took me a year to create, so I hope you enjoy it. But anyway, I have quite a few sounds here. At this stage, I'm not using the channel strip yet, but I'm going to show you with examples what you can do with each module of the channel strip. Let's have a listen. Let's start with the drums, shall we? First of all, when I'm talking about the channel strip, I include the EQ in the channel strip as well because it's part of the channel strip right here. Now, as you can see, we have several modules in the channel strip. We have gate, we have compression. The compressor can have up to three different flavors. We have the standard compressor, very transparent, very versatile. We have the tube compressor, which to my ears, it sounds very much like an optical compressor, like an LA-2A. And we also have the vintage compressor, which is a more of a FED-like compressor, very fast, very punchy. Then we have the EQ. Then we have the tools that can be either a de -esser or an envelope shaper. I'm gonna show you all these things straight away. Then we have the saturation section. It's one of the most useful ones when it comes to adding color to your mixes. We have Magneto. This is also a plugin in Cubase, tape saturation and tube saturation. And then we have the limit section where we have a brick wall limiter, a maximizer and a standard limiter. Now I'm going to explain all these things in detail, so stay tuned. The first thing that I want to tell you, and this is something that many people forget, is that you can rearrange the order of these modules very easily. If you go here to strip, then you can change the order. And the way you do this is you just click and drag. For example, if I want to place my EQ before the compressor, I can do it like that. I can move it around, maybe I want to add a saturation module and then maybe I want to place it at the very beginning. Now I would like to say that the default order of the channel strip makes total sense, so unless you're looking for a specific sound or if you don't know what you're doing, I wouldn't change it necessarily. Now this is the first thing, the next thing is that you can place the channel strip before or after your inserts, which is really, really useful. So if I click here, you can see I can move my channel strip to pre-inserts. So this way, my channel strip comes before the inserts, and this way, it comes after the inserts. It makes sense. If you want to have a limiter on every channel just to make sure that you're not peaking, then I would suggest that you place your strip 
at the end of your chain even after the inserts. But again, there's a lot of flexibility and it's so easy to change things around that you can go by ear and depending on your material, you might want to have different configurations. Let's go and start talking about the channel strip. First of all, let's talk about the EQ. You all know about the EQ. It's a very good sounding EQ in my opinion. I use it all the time. I use it to cut, I use it to boost, I use it to do some surgical EQ tweaking and I'm using it a lot for the pre-gain and the filtering. I use these filters all the time, especially with my CC121. I can just use my AI knob here and do my filtering very, very easily. And same goes for the EQs. I love the AI knob on the CC121. If you haven't checked it out, I'm going to have a link right here for the CC121 video. Let's listen to these drums and let's hear what we can do with the channel strip, okay? If I wanted to enhance the snare, for example, a little bit, I would add a little bit of See, 1 dB, but it's enough. The EQ is very, very good. Okay, that's it. Perfect. Now let's move on to the channel strip. Let's take it one by one. First of all, the gate. Let's see what we can do with the gate. The gate is a very, very useful thing to have. I would suggest you have it first in the chain, but basically you can use it to remove any noise from vocals. You can use it to remove breaths. You can use it to remove any noises from guitar recordings, or you can use it to isolate a snare, for example, or you want to do some drum processing. In this case, I can make this drum kit a little bit more staccato, you know, a little bit more short. And I can even activate a filter. So maybe I want to have my gate being sensitive to the low end. See, let's sweep the filter. You know why that happens? Because now the detector for the gate tries to find the frequencies in order to open it. And because we are in very, very high frequencies, it doesn't open it so often. But if I move here to the snare territory, see, I can even isolate the snare almost. So you can create some really interesting effects with the gate and it's very powerful. Using the filter, you can isolate specific elements and really, really fix problems as well if you want to. So in this case, I'm not gonna use the gate because I like the sound of this drum kit and I'm going to go straight to the compressor. Let's have a listen. And here I'm going to show you the different flavors that we have. I'm going to start with the standard compressor first. And I'm going to hit the E button so that I can see the big interface. That's another very cool thing that you can do. You can actually go and check all the parameters of each module. Okay, so let's go for relatively medium attack, fast release. And I like to turn the makeup gain off most of the times because I want to be able to control the level manually, okay? So this I might use as a VCA style compressor, maybe like an SSL or something for my drum kit. So you can see it adds a lot of punch, it adds attack, but it's still a relatively clean compressor. If I go to high ratio, it 
it sounds very, very aggressive. And we have all the usual suspects. We have the threshold. This is where we set the level where the compressor will start working. We have the attack, how fast the compressor is going to grab these transients. Hold is a very interesting one, and um, I think it's very useful sometimes. It works in a similar way like the release, but it's completely manual, independent of the level of your signal. So, for example, I can have a very short release, but if I open the hold, it will still keep the gain reduction going regardless of whether the signal has dropped below the threshold. So it's a very interesting control and I would experiment with it because you can come up with some really interesting sounds. compared to the release, for example. See, they are completely, completely different. For the release, we also have an auto-release, which is really common for VCA uh, compressors. And I would say, just listen and see what sounds better to you. Nevertheless, I love the compressor in Cubase and in the channel strip. I think it sounds really great and you can get some really amazing sounds out of it. Let's move on to the next compressor and that's the tube compressor. Now this is more of an opto style compressor. It's a little bit more smooth, a little bit creamier. I would probably use it for vocals. Let's go here. I'm going to go to my vocal track and I'm going to use the tube compressor. And I'm going to hit the E button so that we can see it in all its glory. Let's try it out. We gave every inch of our soul And I don't know if I have it in me To let somebody in again And I don't know if I really believe and what I love about the Chew Compressor is that it can compress 14 dBs, but it still sounds smooth, it still sounds creamy. Now, with the Tube Compressor, we also have some more options like the drive. This can add a little bit of saturation, a little bit of tube warmth to your sound. We still have the attack and the release, which is not a typical thing for opto-style compressors. And we also have a sidechain filter. And if you want to know more about this, I've done a video on these compressors. I'm going to link it right here. Now, let's have a listen. The character can also give you a little bit of air to your vocals. I love that. So without it? Found home, but I got it wrong. Found love, had to let it go. Don't know where we lost control. We gave every inch of our soul. So, again, we have an auto-release if we want to, but I think this is a great sounding compressor as a whole. Very, very nice. Let's move back to the drums. And in this case, I'm going to use the vintage compressor. Let's have a listen. This is, like I said, a more punchy, more aggressive compressor, so it works great with drums. And for drums, I tend to open the attack a little bit, drive it. Use with caution. And sometimes I really like to add the attack mode, which is the punch. So you can hear this compressor is way, way more aggressive. It has a lot of character, a lot of oomph. And the great thing is that you can mix it in, like all of the compressors, with the dry signal. So you can really be aggressive with this, use it as a parallel compressor and blend it with your dry drums. Let's try that. Oh, by the way, if you haven't noticed, you will see that we can see the gain reduction right here in the view meters in Cubase. That's really cool. And that's when you use the channel strip. See?
Now, let's blend it in. That's without the compressor. So even with 50%, we get a very, very nice pronounced attack. It's really, really beautiful. Let's move on to the next things that we have in the channel strip. Of course, after this comes the EQ, and then we have the tools. Now the tools are really powerful. They can really, really change the shape of your tracks. But before I talk about the tools, I want to talk about today's video sponsor, and that's Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for curious and creative people, people that want to explore something new every day. You can explore new skills, you can discover new passions. So if you're interested about music, music production, if you're interested about learning an instrument, if you're interested about learning design, Skillshare definitely has a class for you. Recently, I've been checking out Cinematography Basics, Understanding Filmmaking Style from Zach Mulligan, and it's an incredible class. As you know, apart from music, I have a huge passion for videography and photography, and this class has been really, really beautiful for me. I love the channels about getting inspiration, the visual language for cinema, creating shot lists. This is actually useful stuff for my everyday work. And as a film composer and a producer that writes music for media, it's very important that you understand the concepts of cinematography, of videography and all these things. Film, it's all very important. Nothing is in its own box. You have to spread your knowledge. The great thing with Skillshare is that it's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so that you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Now, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link below in the description will get a free trial of the premium membership so that you can explore your creativity. Thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the channel strip. The first tool that I want to show you is the envelope shaper. And this is a godsend to have it in the channel strip on every channel on the Cubase Mix console. It really sounds amazing. Let me show you on these drums. It's like an amazing transient designer. It sounds incredible. Sometimes I find that it works better than third-party plugins, to be honest with you. And the way you use it is super simple. The attack adds attack to your sounds. The release, it can make a sound tighter or it can make a sound longer. And the length changes the attack length. So if you want to add attack to the very, very first bit of the transient, then you can set it to you know, just a low value, like nine milliseconds. But then if you want to also enhance the body of a snare, for example, then you might want to turn it up a little bit. For kick drums, you might find that you need to turn it up a little bit more. For snares, it depends on the snare. Let's have a listen. See the difference? Now I'm affecting the hi-hats a little bit, but then I get more and more of the body of the snare, of the kick drum and all these things. Of course, use it with caution, don't overdo it because it, it sounds really good and it's very easy to overdo it. There's always this output gain control here, so if you find that your levels go a bit out of hand because we're adding a lot of attack, you can just tame them like this. Now, let's try the release. Or tight. And this is the sound that I want. And these are some of the sources that I have in the modern 80s drum kit. And these are tools that can be very handy when you're mixing. So let's enhance the attack a little bit. Uh, I'm going to keep the release where it is and let's listen. The next tool is the de-esser. Now the de-esser is really straightforward. I can just activate it and let's try it on these vocals. You can set the frequencies here 
So you can set your low frequency, low range and high range. And we also have a threshold, how much gain reduction we're going to have for the S's and also the auto threshold. The auto threshold is really useful if you want to get to the sound very quickly, but if you want, you can also deactivate it and use the actual threshold control, which is what I tend to do most of the times. Let's have a listen. See, it grabs the S's. So when you hit the solo button, you can hear this range. And when you hit the difference, you can hear what the DSR does, what it removes from your sound. Let's have a listen. So this actually helps you set the frequency range and this shows you what the DSR does. So again, try not to overdo it. I would play with the threshold until I see there's a bit of gain reduction and then I usually tweak the reduction so that it sounds natural. Simple, it's a really effective de -esser. really good to have it in the channel stream without opening a plugin. The next thing that I want to show you is the saturation and I'm going to keep going with the drum kit because I think you will be able to hear quite a bit of the color of its saturator. The first one is the Magneto. Magneto is one of my favorite plugins in Cubase and this adds this kind of tape saturation, this tape sound to your tracks. Again, it's very easy to get tempted and add it on every channel and you absolutely can. It's going to sound great, but of course, Trust your ears, see if it works with the music. Now, let's play it. So as you can hear, it makes the sound a little bit more round. It gives you this kind of tape characteristic. If you've ever passed anything through tape, you will know the sound. It's not like everything changes, but you can hear the transients become a little bit smoother. You get this natural tape compression. It's beautiful. There are quite a few things that you can do here. First, we have the saturation. This is how you, much you drive the Magneto 2. With this control, we can set the lowest frequency that the saturation is going to be applied to. For example, if you want to leave the low end alone, you can just go and turn this up and set it to, I don't know, 400 hertz a thousand hertz, but this is something that you really need to listen and determine what sounds best. Let's try it. Personally, I love what the Magneto does to the low end, so I tend to keep it quite low. Next, we have the high frequency adjust. This allows you to enhance or reduce the top end of the signal. And this kind of emulates the loss of top end that you might have with tape. Everything becomes a little bit smoother. But if you add top end to this, it also sounds really nice. Let's try it out. Hear that? And the high frequency does exactly what the low frequency knob does, but for the high frequencies. So if you want to leave the high frequencies unaffected by Magneto, then you can just set your limit here. And if we want to listen to these two controls, we can just press the solo button and now we can hear how they sound. So you don't have to do any guesswork with Magneto. Everything is laid out in a very, very nice way and it all makes sense. I think that Magneto is one of those processes that you cannot really make it sound good. It's always going to sound better. And uh, if you add it to drums, to vocals, it's going to give you a very nice color if that's what you're looking for because 
not every style of music works well with tape. The next is the tape saturation. And this I tend to use for synths, I tend to use for vocals. It's really nice, it adds a very nice top end, it gives presence to the sound. To me, the tape saturation is a little bit more aggressive, especially when it comes to transients. So, like I said, I'm using it a lot for synths. Let's go and use this for this brass sound that I have here that comes from Apollo. Let's go here and play it. I love it for seeing sounds like this. It makes them come alive, it makes them fuller, it makes them get the place that they need in the mix. So I love that. Tape saturation along with tube saturation actually are really, really nice on synths. Let's try this tube saturation for this synth. and it also breaks up really nicely. And this is one of the ways that I like adding volume to my individual channels. Instead of doing this, you know, I prefer to add saturation, I prefer to add harmonics, I prefer to add color to the sound, and as you can see, it sounds really nice. It's thicker, it's better, and you know, again, you have to trust your ears. Sometimes you might just need to ride the volume. But I prefer to impart any changes in the most effective way. Like with everything that I showed you, we have a low filter and we also have a high filter. Now, the last thing that I want to show you is the limit section. And the limit section, I think it's a little bit underrated with the channel strip. Let's take it one by one. First, we have a brick wall limiter. This is very straightforward. What it's gonna do is is wherever we set the threshold, it's not going to allow any audio going over this threshold. We also have a release, an auto release, works pretty much like the compressor. So let's have a listen. Now, the reason why I use this, I use this as a safety net. If I get too excited and I start adding a little bit of volume to my channels, this will let me know because first of all, I will see it. Second, I will hear it that the sound is getting, you know, limited and I'm going to be like, okay, I have to check my gain staging. I have to check how I'm going to compensate for the volume because I'm obviously going a little bit over. Actually, I would encourage you to try and do this for specific genres of music because Cubase has some tricks up its sleeve, but I'm not going to open this can of worms <laughs> at this stage. But this is what the brick wall limiter does. The second one is the standard limiter. And the difference with this one is that you can also boost. So if you want to add a tiny bit of level at the very end of your chain, you can do this. It also has a release. We have an auto release and the output. So let's have a listen. Again, very useful, especially if you're mixing genres of music that require a lot of loudness. You know, adding a limiter on every channel can help tame these little peaks. You don't want to overdo it with a limiter. You want to only limit like one dB. That's enough so that you can push all your channels so that you can make your mix louder, if that's what you're looking for. Now, speaking of loudness, the last limiter mode that we can have here is the maximizer. And the maximizer does what the name says, it can make your tracks loud. And if you hit the E button here, you can open the interface as well. Now for the maximizer, I would probably go for the modern algorithm for most of the times because I think it sounds more open. I think you can get way louder with a modern algorithm compared to the classic. And we have a mix knob, we have a soft clip, so you can incorporate some clipping into your sound. 
the output, recover, release. Maybe I'm gonna do a video about this because this is a little bit too deep for this video. But again, try it out, see what works. The main star of the show, of course, is the optimized knob and let's try it out on these drums. So you can see I'm peaking roughly at the same place, but the perceived loudness is uh, much higher. You know, you hear those drums way louder with the maximizer. Again, like I said, use it wisely. Don't use it on every channel unless you're really going for an in-your-face, I don't know, uh, super aggressive dubstep or hard style sound. I don't know, you know, it depends on what kind of music you're creating. The tools are there. Now it's up to you to use them wisely and make the best out of them. But what I'm trying to say on this video is that with all these tools that we have here with the channel strip, it's very easy to get your mix to a point where it's already sounding incredibly good. And I wouldn't be exaggerating if I said that if you really want to, you can pretty much do your entire mix using the channel strip without any plugins and use inserts just for your reverbs, for your delays, for any special plugins, apart from all these things that we have in the channel strip. And it goes without saying that if you've created a chain that you like a lot and you want to reuse it again, don't forget that you can go here and save your channel strip preset. You can use your category section, character, you can write a comment, do a rating, and of course name your preset, and then you can reuse it again and again and again. And that's really, really useful if you build your own library of presets with a channel strip. And if you're feeling a little bit adventurous and you want to experiment, you can also load <laughs> any of these presets and just tweak them away or just use them the way they are. They're really, really awesome. I can guarantee you can create a killer mix with a channel strip once you've mastered it. And I hope that this video helped with that. And if you learned something about the channel strip today, I would really appreciate it if you hit this like button down there, subscribe to the channel and share this video with any Cubase user that you know that doesn't use the channel strip so much because it's an awesome tool. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Have fun with the channel strip. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.